you don't grow up, you know, wanting to be locked away f forever, you know, being a mass murderer. You grow up wanting to be a ball player, a race car driver, fireman, things like that. I want to know what happened, both for myself and, and the girls that are hurt, killed. Joel Rifkin confessed to the murders of 17 women. What caused this man to kill? He believes it all started in his brain. Apparently I have a deficit in this frontal lobe area. And uh, my thought process is not your thought process. So he's allowed cutting edge science to explore his brain in the hopes of finding an answer to the question that plagues him. Nice to meet you. Why does he kill? I visited with the 51 year old inmate in an upstate New York prison. One of the earlier homicides or nights or events might have been euphoric and then I was chasing it after that. The thing is you never get that original rush. That's the whole point of why you keep chasing it. The killing began on a winter night in 1989 after Drifkin picked up a prostitute in Manhattan. As the night progresses, I'm in for a hundred. I mean, over 100, about 150 all told. And you haven't seen any sex at all? No. Somewhere within the next couple of hours, I just got fed up and I uh, started hitting her. Basically, beat her till my arms got tired. And then we wrestled on the floor and uh, I ended up strangling her. I'm starting to realize that I had done something that, you know, this is not, this is not good. This, this is extremely screwed up. <laughs> not screwed up enough to stop him from a clean-up process nearly as grotesque as his unconscionable crime. I uh, cut her up with a hobby knife. Uh, you, you started severing the body? Yeah, made it as small as I could. It must be pretty difficult. To Basically, I cut off. everything to the joint and then would pop the joints out. Did the legs the same way and uh, proceeded to take her head off. So now I had six pieces that I wrapped up and casually loaded into the trunk of the car throughout the day. But how could someone act casually after killing and dissecting another person? Neuroscientist Dr. Daniel Amen analyzed Rifkin's brain scan. When I looked at Joel Rifkin's scan, it, I thought to myself, this is a brain that is vulnerable to violence. He had low activity in his prefrontal cortex, that most human thoughtful part of the brain. See, for example, in these scans, the image of the normal brain is brighter in the front, and in the murderer's brain, that same region is dark. It's an area they call the, the frontal lobe. In its simplest form, that's where we have our conscience. So do Rifkin's scans show that he's missing a conscience? Could a faulty brain have played a role in the brutal murders of so many women? There are good nights with prostitutes and there are bad nights with prostitutes. Uh, there are times you get ripped off, there are times things go as planned. Joel Rifkin committed his final murder in June of 1993. She was the third or fourth girl I was with that night. In the back seat of the car, strangled her, drove her home. He wrapped up Tiffany Bresciani's body and stuck her in the trunk before turning the car over to his mother to run some errands. Mom could have put groceries in the trunk that morning. None of it made sense by that time. With notable indifference, Rifkin told me that he later transferred the decomposing body to the back of the family pickup truck. But on the highway, a license plate happened to fall off and he was stopped by the police. Uh, troopers discovered that there was the body of a female, a white female, in the back of the pickup. I was, I was under arrest. I don't know. I knew that was it. You do it, Joel. What do you have to say? What do you have to say, Joel? At a cognitive level, psychopaths know right from wrong, but they don't have the feeling for what's right and wrong. We have 41 murderers. Dr. Adrian Rain has studied psychopaths for 30 years. Both he and Dr. Amon believe that while the psychopathic mind can't be cured, it may be treatable, starting with a diet high in omega-3s. There have even been two studies conducted already 
which have given omega-3 to young prisoners and both have shown that after about four months of omega-3 treatment, there's a 35% reduction in serious offending within the prison. So we can stop the rot. Early intervention could be the key. The sad thing is, if I would have seen him perhaps as a teenager and helped to remediate his brain, that he would have been less likely, I think, to act out in violent ways. Do you think if you'd had an intervention when you were younger, you might not have done what you did? Wow. You know, if this is what they could have seen when I was eight or 10, Maybe none of this would have happened. Maybe I could have gotten the therapy or the drugs I needed. Maybe some people would have survived. Yeah. And maybe now uh, the next kid who comes along, we can be helped. But this discussion has sparked an explosive legal debate. If these killers have bad brains, does that excuse their actions? A real concern that society has is that brain imaging research will be used to exonerate psychopathic murderous individuals who should be put to death or who should be locked up for life. It's been coined neuro-law and it carries profound implications on the question of accountability. In fact, Rain testified in the capital murder case of Donta Page, a young man from a troubled home. We brain scanned this individual, Donta Page, and found that he had much poorer functioning in the part of the brain that's involved in controlling and regulating behavior. Put all the factors together, the abuse, the poverty, together with the poor brain functioning, and here's a walking recipe for later violence. Page was spared the death penalty in part because of his brain scans. Is that the right decision? If we buy into the line of thinking that I put forward to the judge and jury, then is this a slippery slope to Armageddon? What do you say to those who say, this is just making excuses for criminal murderous behavior, that basically trying to find the answer in the brain is a sophisticated way of excusing your behavior? That's their opinion. It, it, it gives me part of an answer. It's not the complete answer. You know, does this mean I was destined to do what I did? I don't know.